AI is quickly becoming really good at all sorts of different artistic endeavors, and most notably for this video, book covers. There is a new tool that is absolutely amazing for book covers. Actually, it's not that new, but this is the first time that we're getting into it on this channel. It's one of those things that's kind of made waves in a lot of the author communities recently, so I thought I would take the opportunity to talk about it. The tool I'm going to walk you through today is called Ideogram. It's one of the best options out there for book covers and for just design in general, any kind of graphic design or something that you would have used Photoshop for in the past. It seems to be really good at that kind of design work. So in this video, I'm going to walk you through a full tutorial on how to use Ideogram for your book covers. I'm going to give you my honest thoughts on how it compares to other tools like Midjourney, as well as talk about a big problem that Ideogram has and that AI art generators in general have for generating book covers. So we'll get into that and let's go. All right, so here's the prompt we're gonna start with. I'm gonna go for an urban fantasy book cover. So I have that listed here, an urban fantasy book cover, a Hispanic woman with long black hair, a leather jacket, and holding a samurai sword, swirling purple and yellow magic, with the book title in the lower third titled The Myth of Midas, with the series name under the title Roots of Ambition Book One, and the author name at the top, Jason Hamilton. So a couple of things here. First of all, anything that I want to have in text, I put in quotes so it knows that that is the text. Ideogram is one of those tools that's pretty good at text. It's one of the best at text, which is why a lot of people are using it for their book covers. And I'm actually going to change this to purple and gold magic, not yellow. And other things that I put here, like putting the book title in the lower third and the author name at the top, that's another thing that it's usually pretty good at. Obviously, as with any art generator, it doesn't get everything perfectly all the time, but it usually does a decent job. Over here on the left, you can select whether you want the magic prompt. So the magic prompt will take your prompt and basically enhance it and make it better and yes I do want that on it will do some of the images with my exact prompt and some without that's what auto means if I turned it on it would just be enhancing the prompt for every single image uh, which can give you some interesting results or you can just turn it off entirely and say no I just wanted this to be my exact prompt we want the aspect ratio to be 9 by 16 because that's the closest to a book cover size uh, you can also just set your own thing here if you wanted I'm just going to go with 9 by 16 for visibility if unless you're on one of the higher paid plans you can only set this to public and the model that we want to use is the latest one, which is 2.0. You can also set the color palette if you want. If you have a specific color palette that you're going for, which could be useful if you're doing like a series and you want the color palette to be consistent, you can go here and select a custom color palette or one of the color palettes that they have here just to make sure that that is consistent across book covers, which is a useful tool. But for now, I'm just going to leave this to auto. For rendering, I'm going to put it at quality because I want it to be quality. And for negative prompting, for for this particular prompt, we're not going to put anything in here, but I will show you how I use this negative prompt here in a second. Also down here at the bottom, you have options of different styles. I'm going to leave it at auto and hit generate. All right, and here's my generation. And all of these are actually really, really good. Um, for urban fantasy, I, like these are all pretty impressive. It did get most of my instructions correct. So it has the name at the top. Some of them, like I put the series title here as well as down here. Uh, it also didn't put Roots of Ambition book one, like I asked. This one did, and this, so it didn't get the placement entirely correct. This one got the text the best, it looks like, as well as this one. In fact, I love the design work on this one, just the font here looks pretty amazing. Roots of Ambition book one, Jason Hamilton at the top. So they got all that correct. This one got it correct too. These two uh, have some work to do and there's some jankiness going on like up here. But all, all in all, the overall style is really, really great. Another thing that I noticed is that the samurai sword is, isn't too bad. Usually AI really struggles with swords. You can kind of see this one, like the handle is weird here. It's not really samurai sword looking. And then it goes here behind her head and comes out looking almost like it's a different sword. It's not quite attached to this initial blade. This one isn't too bad. The one here on the right, I really like the cover, but I think for an urban fantasy cover, this wouldn't actually be a, a good one just because it looks too illustrated, which I don't see too often on urban fantasy covers. If you have an urban fantasy cover with a human in the center of it, usually it actually looks a little bit more photographic uh, from my experience. So this is a, this is a great start. But one of the great things about Ideogram 
Instagram that it does really well is any kind of text-based design. So let's try a different one. Instead of an urban fantasy, we'll just say a gothic romance book cover. Actually, we're gonna get rid of the main design entirely and make this just a book cover with text. And we're gonna say with a swirly book title, and instead of in the lower third, we're gonna say taking up the entire book cover titled Desire of the Vampire. I'm not good at coming up with book titles on the spot. I have to do some research and lots of other things, but we'll just call that. With the series name under the title, eh, sure. We can probably leave that. Um, we'll call this Dracula's Bride, book one. And the author name at the top, but let's do uh, Jane Everest, I don't know. And that should be it. I think I'll just leave it at that and we'll hit generate. All right, and it gave us these text-based designs, which are amazing. Like, look at these. I totally get gothic romance vibes from this. Even though I asked it for swirly text, I think it did a better job with the text. That's not as swirly, but it does have that gothic feel. There is a lot of swirliness in the design around it, which is kind of cool. Probably my favorite is this one. Although I think actually this one here on the right, this one is amazing. Like this is definitely the best one. It's got a moon, like, ah, oh, chef's kiss. Mm, that's amazing work right there. And just to show off one more thing here, let's go ahead and do another one for a thriller book cover. So thriller book cover with a lighthouse in the distance and a shadowy figure facing away from the camera at night. And then for the book title, we'll say with bold text for the title, we'll call it title Port Death. Not great at coming up with titles on the spot here. Uh, with the series name under the title, we'll call this The Lighthouse Murders Book One. And the author name at the top, I'll just put my own name again and run that. Now, all of this comes with a caveat, which is that you need to actually be familiar with the genre that you're going for. Even if I just say thriller genre, it can usually do a good job. The things that I added there, like the lighthouse in the distance, the shadowy figure, nighttime, those are all things that I know just from having observed quite a lot of thriller books, that those are tropes that I would expect to see in the thriller books. And just look at this. These are fantastic thriller book covers that we have here. All of these could absolutely work as a thriller with a little cleanup, of course you have like the word thriller just randomly thrown in here i think these first two get it right the the most but i do like for the image this one is probably my favorite but all of these look like thriller novels right so to move into to my second point i want to talk about why i'm using itagram instead of midjourney and what the strengths are and what i've found in a lot of testing of both platforms is that ideogram is absolutely amazing at things that are graphically inspired so imagine anything that someone would have used Adobe Photoshop for to create. So logos, design, t-shirt designs, anything that's sort of graphic design in that realm, as well as anything that was maybe photo bashed together in Photoshop where people are just taking a bunch of different photos and putting them together, which is most of what Photoshop art is. And it's what most book covers have been in the past, have been these things that have just kind of been mashed together in Photoshop. And if you look at the feed that Ideogram gives you, you'll notice that there is quite a lot of that type of style of art. It's certainly not all that it is, but you'll see, you know, a lot of text designs here, Valentine's Day that looks like Halloween. This design here, which is really cool and interesting. This person standing on or lying down on a candy bar. Lots of stuff there. Uh, you do have some images that look like photorealistic and things like that, but a lot of this looks like stuff that could have just been created in Photoshop by a skilled Photoshop artist. I like this one for the love of coffee. There's just a lot of different illustrations and stuff. And so you'll see that it's definitely good at that. Mid Journey, on the other hand, I find to be much better at just a, a more organic feeling artistry. It feels more like the kind of art that somebody would draw or paint. And, and, and that could be like literal painting illustration, or it could be digital painting. But I get much more of a sense that something has been organically created inside of Mid Journey. Whereas with Ideogram, I get more of a sense that this has been designed in a program like Photoshop, which is kind of a fine distinction to make because both are capable of going into both areas. But for instance, I write fantasy and fantasy book covers tend to have a more illustrated look on the whole. 
especially if you're getting into epic fantasy or military fantasy or any of those. And I found that Ideogram struggles a little bit with those types of images, whereas I can get what I need out of Mid Journey pretty well. So Ideogram isn't necessarily perfect for all types of genres, but it is good for, I would say most of them because most book covers are created in Photoshop and they have that sort of Photoshop look to them, which is not a bad thing at all. It's just the way it is. And I have a feeling Ideogram was trained on a lot of that kind of material designed intentional material that it's done really really well in those kind of arenas and what that's why i think ideogram is so good at book covers whereas mid journey is just better for more art looking projects so i would use mid journey for something like concept art for my characters and things like that i get better results from mid journey in in those senses but using ideogram for book cover seems to be a smart option but this does bring us to one major issue when it comes to building book covers in ideogram or in ai art in general and that is the fact that we have the text. So let's go back to our creations here. Like these are amazing. Uh, look at this, Jason Hamilton, Port Death, The Lighthouse Murders, like this one right here. You can get more information on each of these when you click on them. The text looks great. The sort of like gravelly marbled effects here that you see on the text look great. It looks perfect for a thriller. There's just one problem. Uh, they are baked into the image and we cannot remove this text or change it or anything without completely regenerating the entire thing. And if we were to have a book series, so let's say this was the first book in a series, we would want the text and the font, notably of the text, to match exactly for every single book. And that is the major issue from doing this here inside of uh, Ideogram directly is that you can't really change the text at all. And chances are some of these, like if you look down here, the series title here, chances are this is slightly off center because AI is not precise in that way. Same with like all of this text. It's mostly centered. I would also be willing to bet that the font style is not very consistent even within the text itself. Like if we had an O here and an O here, like these look okay, but they are probably not exactly the same. Like they would be if you were using Photoshop. And of course, if we tried to regenerate this, creating a second book cover for maybe a sequel and tried to use this as a reference, it would not get the font and everything exactly correct or positioned exactly correctly. So what do we do about this? Well, this is one of the reasons why I recommend most authors get at least a small amount of experience with either Adobe Photoshop or Canva, either of which can be used to fix some of these issues. Some of this, like I could take this and I could probably take it into Photoshop and remove the text. And that wouldn't be too difficult using Adobe Photoshop, especially with their generative AI features as well. I could just kind of select the text and have it fill it in with uh, something else. That would be especially easy for text like the like my name here at the top or this uh, Lighthouse Murder series title here at the bottom. It might require a little bit more work to get rid of this entire text here. So you could do that. You can also take this and use it as an example, like give it to a designer and say, I want something like this with text like this. And that can be a good idea as well to just serve as a prototype for the finished work. And then the design illustrator will be able to create something similar for you that won't have any of the little AI isms that you get inside of the art, little weird things that you notice when you're looking closer at it. And it will have text that is consistent, is removable and so forth. Another thing that you could do if you have any kind of skill in lettering of your own, which is one of those things that I recommend authors kind of get a feel for if you want to do this kind of work is you can create just the image without the text and then go in and add the text later inside of Photoshop or Canva. So if we wanted to redo this design without the text, how would we do that? There's a couple of things. So first of all, I would say a thriller book cover artwork slash, uh, well, I'll just say artwork for now. You have to be careful with the word you use here. I've used like illustration and it looks more illustrated, but sometimes I've used image and it looks almost too photorealistic. So I'm just gonna use artwork, but you might wanna play around with the word use there. With the lighthouse in the distance and a shadowy figure facing away from the camera at night. And then we're just gonna get rid of all of this here that it talks about the text. And then here under negative prompt, I'm just gonna put text to just to tell it that I do not want any text in this image. Doesn't always get it right, but usually it does. We're gonna leave this on auto, leave everything else the same and hit generate. All right, and we got these images. All of these images look pretty good. It could definitely work as the background for a thriller novel. I do think that having
having the thriller, like having it add the text does add something. It looks at this as more of a finished image. And so all of these images are treated in a way like the shadows around the text and everything are just right to make the text pop. Whereas here, like, yes, it's the same design, same general idea, but it's, you know, you can tell it's a little bit brighter. It's, um, there, there's some issues with it when compared to this stuff with the text. So I understand how getting the text in there is uh, can make it look really good, but unless you're capable of removing that text or you're just making this as a prototype for your designer to work with, you're gonna need to work with something like this. If you liked it more like this instead of like this, then you could add to the prompt. We could say lots of shadows, dark, moody uh, environment, stuff like that to try and make it a little bit closer to the original image. So here we got a couple more. Some of these are pretty good. This one's not too bad at all, but still doesn't quite have that thriller vibe in the same way that these do. So it's something you have to play around with and work on, but ultimately, unless this is a standalone book that is not gonna have sequels, then you're gonna need to have text that is separated from the image behind it. And to do that, you're gonna either need to get some good Photoshop skills or just use this as a prototype with your designer, which is a totally fine thing to do. I'll just mention, they're not sponsoring this video or anything, but I'll mention Get Covers, which the price of book cover from Get Covers is about the same as a subscription to an AI art generator like this one. So it's really cheap and inexpensive and and you could easily give them a prototype like one of these images and say, hey, I want something along these lines and they could take that and run with it. Now, if you wanna learn a little bit more about my process for creating a book cover all the way from scratch, including the lettering and taking out all of the other little artifacts and things inside of the images that it gives you that are a little bit odd and weird, you can go ahead and check out this video where I walk you through the entire process using Midjourney in that case. So you can see my process there and I will see you in the next video.